Hello everybody, it's Nick here with Nick Tolman Music and today we're going to go ahead and continue our beginner guitar lesson series using Mel Bay's Modern Guitar Method Grade 1. So today we're going to be looking at page 40 and on page 40 uh, we have two new exercises. There really aren't any new concepts being taught on this page but we we are going to learn two new two new songs and the first is a duet called the little prince and then the second is a guitar solo called carry me back to old virginia and really this should be the song that i'm playing because in about a year i'll be moving to virginia and uh it'll it'll be my first time living in virginia but uh so yeah anyways carry me back to old virginia all right so let's go ahead and dive in so starting off, The Little Prince, uh, we're going to go ahead and just play this part one at 72 on the metronome. It's pretty straightforward. The thing to watch out for on this, and we'll talk about it here in a minute, is there is quite a bit of second position stuff happening here. Uh, but we're, let's go ahead and play it at 72 and then we'll kind of dive into that a little bit. So here is part one of The Little Prince at 72 on the metronome. One and two and ready and play. So that's part one at 72. Now, again, like I said on, at the start, the biggest thing to watch out for on this one is the fact that there's a lot of stuff happening here in second position, which is fine. Again, Mel Bay is using their kind of method of, of kind of tricking you into doing certain things before the concept is really introduced. And, and I think it's great. There's a lot of these exercises where second position just kind of naturally is the easier way to go. And so it's just kind of easing you into that, into that idea. If you look here, it starts out the first couple measures or the first measure, right? All first position, no problem. Then when it goes up to that high G, it's marked two. Now I would follow that fingering, right? So you're gonna play that D with your third finger and then you're gonna just kind of sneak your second finger up under to play the G. And then you're in second position. And then once you play the A, it's gonna be a shift back down to C. Right? That's all there is to that little shift. I'll do it here slowly for you. So here's the second measure. Right, so it's a kind of a sneaky shift up into second and then a quick shift back down once you play that C again. Then we're cruising along, it's all straightforward. And then when we get to the one, two, three, four, five, sixth measure of the top line, of the first line, we're playing that high G and then it wants us to play the next G with our second finger. So it's just a shift there. Now that's something that you can practice a little bit and try to try to play those notes without there being any gap, almost as if you played both G's with the same finger. And you can actually, 
you can see here, you can hit a note, like for instance, G, starting with your third finger, and I can actually switch fingers and keep the sustain going, right? That's kind of the trick you want to do. And what it is, is you're going to, I'm placing my second finger before I lift off the third, right? If I lift off the third finger first, it's going to kill the sound. So that's what you want to do. You might want to make that nice and smooth. That way you can make that shift. without there being any kind of gap. So I'll try that one more time for you. This is the sixth measure. Three. Right, nice and smooth. It's really pretty easy, uh, but it is just kind of a fun little thing to, to practice there. All right, then we move along. I'm gonna st actually stay in second position at this point. So going into the second line, Got an open E, high A, that's why we're staying in second position. And then an F sharp, which we'll play with our first finger, second position, G. And then the third measure, third measure of the second line is where we're gonna shift. On that open B, we're gonna shift back down. Okay, and then we're cruising along. All this is straightforward now. We're gonna do the same thing. It's not marked, but in the sixth measure here of the second line, it's exactly the same as the second measure up on the first line. It's the exact same thing. So if you need to, if you wanna like write it in to remind you or whatever, but it's the same exact note. So again, sixth, seventh, and eighth measure on the second line are exactly the same as the second, third, and fourth measure up on the first line. So you'll do the same kind of shift up into second and then back down for the C. Okay, then we move into the third line. Now this one isn't marked, but I actually like to play this high G here with my fourth finger. That way I can play that D the next note smoothly with the third finger. Instead of having to go to jump strings with the finger. So I would just try that, give that a try, that high G in the second measure here on the last line. I would just try to play that with your fourth finger. I think you'll find it, it makes that smoother. Then moving on, we're in the fifth measure of the last line. And the sixth measure, we're gonna go back to second position. And we're gonna stay in second position. All the way to the end, okay? So that D here, this is the second to last measure. I'm gonna play with my second finger. And then the F sharp, the first finger. The A with my fourth finger, and the G with my second finger. Yep, nothing to it. I would just play those last three measures completely in second position. All right, so other than that, really it's a pretty uh, pretty easy little melody. Um, just spend some time on it and work out those shifts in those places and it shouldn't really be any kind of problem. All right, let's go ahead and try uh, part two. So here is part two at 72 on the metronome. One, two, and ready, and play.
really part two on this one does not have anything that is out of the norm. It is very straightforward. It's all in first position. There are some accidentals in there, but they shouldn't really be any problem for you. They all kind of flow pretty naturally. Um, I would say the most challenging thing about this one is just the fact that there's a lot of skips going on. Right? But you, we've kind of grown accustomed to this. A lot of the second parts are that way. They've kind of got these arpeggiated type things that are happening and uh, yeah so it's it's pretty typical for one of our second parts to do it so we've played so far if you have any specific issues with it or something please let me know in the comments below but i think that 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 one shouldn't be shouldn't really be any problem for you all right so let's go ahead and take a listen to what these parts sound like together at 72. one two and ready and play <laughs> So there we go, that's the parts together at 72. Let's go ahead and bump this metronome up. It is labeled on Dante, so we're not gonna go too much faster, we're just gonna take it at 100 on the metronome and give it a try. So here we go, part one at 100. One, two, one, two, and ready and go. job. Let's go ahead and try part two at 100 on the metronome. One, two, ready and play.
fantastic a part. It's a, it's, it just kind of flows on the fingers. I love the chromatic uh, accidentals and stuff that are happening. So, all right, let's go ahead and hear this together. So both parts together at 100 on the metronome. One, two, ready and play. <laughs> So that is the little prince. Let's go ahead and move ahead to our next exercise on this page. Carry me back to old Virginia. All right, so this one is, uh, as usual, I, I think in general, the duet parts tend to be a little easier as far as learning the parts uh, compared to the guitar solos in Mel Bay, and that's fine. Um, so this one will probably require a little bit more work than the little prince, but we'll go ahead and play it for you at 72 and then we will talk about uh, we'll kind of do a walk through and kind of hit the individual measures and what you need to be looking out for on this one so let's give it a shot carry me back to old virginia at 72 on the metronome one two and ready and play <laughs> And there we go. So that is Carry Me Back to Old Virginia at 72. I did make one little mistake in the third line, right on the first measure of the third line. Um, but we'll talk about that. We'll kind of, we'll go through this and talk about each measure and kind of what's happening here. So starting right at the beginning, uh, it's outlining a G chord and that's correct. Really, I just start with no fingers on because you don't need to set up your whole G chord by any, any means because you're only showing the D, G, and B all open. Then you've got that low G, so you will play that with your third finger. Then the C chord, right? I'm not using my third finger at all. I'm just doing my the E with the second finger and the C with the first finger. And then it's back to that open G situation. And then you've got that D sharp. Right, which you're gonna play with your first finger and then the A with your second finger. Right, 
Moving into the third measure, then we've got G. It's outlining a C chord. Okay, but really up to this point, it's not too challenging. We're just kind of playing the notes. Fourth measure, we've got this G chord that's happening. Mostly open strings still. Except for that high G, which you just can play with your third finger like you normally would. The fifth measure, still outlining that same G chord. And then we're in the sixth measure, still outlining a G chord, but it's similar to the beginning where we just have open D, G, and B. Now, we move into this, it calls it an E7 chord. And all that's happening there is you've got your D, open D. And then you've got a G sharp, which it has marked to play with your first finger, and then a C to play with your second finger. Now, you can do it that way with one and two, first and second fingers, or you can just bar. And actually, I think I did it both ways when I played through for you, uh, but... But I find it easier maybe to just bar those two. So kind of experiment with that and see what works for you. You can do that either way. And then moving into the seventh measure here, we've got this A7 situation. You're definitely gonna wanna do this in second position because you're, uh, well first, so second position, you're gonna play that chord stack, the low C sharp, play with your third finger on the fifth string, third finger, fourth fret. And then you're gonna play the E with your first finger on the fourth string, second fret. Then you got open G, open B. And the reason you're gonna do it in second position, that gives you the ability to go ahead and play that F sharp, the third note in that measure with your, with your fourth finger. makes it a nice, easy movement. Okay, so I'm just gonna play the sixth and seventh measure for you so you can kind of see how that all goes. Right, one more time. To me, this is the first kind of tricky move that happens in here that you may have to spend some time just ironing out those two measures. And then from there, it just moves into a D7 chord. And that, that eighth measure, you're just gonna wanna play just your standard D7 fingering. Then moving to the second line, we've got that open G thing going on. C, G, G. D sharp, and then, so again, D sharp with your first finger, and then the A and the D sharp together, you're gonna play the A with your second finger. Okay, so that second measure of the second line looks like this. Really pretty easy. Okay, then the third measure. measure. This is all similar to what we've seen already. Now we're going to see this same kind of thing that we did before, but it's slightly different. So here in the sixth and seventh measure of the second line, we've got that G, the E7. Again, so I'm just going to bar the G sharp and the C together. And then go to the A7. Now this is different, okay? So we've got the A7 stack that we built like before. So third finger, or yeah, third finger to play the low C sharp and first finger to play the E. 
Now, from there, I'm just going to lay that first finger down to play the A with my first finger, kind of bar it. Right? And then, I'm going to stay in second position, and I'm going to keep my first finger on E, but I'm going to put my second finger down on the C to get that C chord. Then I'm going to drop my fourth finger on the F sharp, and then it's just a slight shift down to play that G chord with the low B on, with your second finger. Whoo! I know that's a lot. Let me do this nice and slow so you can see what that's all about. So this is the last three measures of the second line. Good. Now sometimes when I am practicing a line like this, okay, where I have a lot of little moving parts that are taking place, I like to separate the shapes, okay? Now when I talk about shapes, we, we, you'll start to understand this concept more as time moves on with the guitar, but the guitar is all about shapes. And every chord kind of has a shape, right? A C chord has a shape. And that shape can sometimes be moved around, right? The basic shape of a C chord you'll recognize in a G chord, right? With the second and third finger, they kind of maintain that same shape, right? As, and then you move up to an F chord. It's also a very similar shape, okay? So sometimes I like to isolate shapes and just make sure that I'm getting all the shapes in the right place and take it out of time, out of context. So the third measure, the first shape is just open, right? Nothing. And then we move into that E7 shape, which I'm advocating. Go ahead and just bar it. If you want to do the one and two like they did above, you can use that shape. That's perfectly fine. For me, I just go with the bar on the, on the G sharp and the C. So that's our second shape. So we go from open to, to that got an open string that's not gonna really count that as a shape that's kind of just moving between shapes and then we've got this a7 shape right there's your a7 shape so now I'm just gonna focus on those three shapes so we've got our open G the e7 shape and then the a7 shape got that A note that's moving to the C shape. All right, so now we've got four shapes. We've got open G, E7 shape, A7 shape, C shape, and then lastly, G shape. Wow. Now for me, for, for whatever reason, when I just kind of focus on that, it really helps me to just kind of picture what the big picture is, is in these movements, okay? So take your time on those shapes and just like make sure you've got them all happening and then kind of just put them, glue them all together essentially. All right, so moving into the third line, we've, uh, we've got a D7 here. So it's just a standard D7 fingering. got this A, C, the B and D like we've seen in several exercises. Okay, we're we'll go ahead and just shift up and play it with one and two like the book has having been having us do. Open G. All this is pretty straightforward. B and D again, first and second finger up in third position. sharp very similar to what we've seen back like uh, it's actually almost identical to the second measure uh, the second measure of the second line this is the sixth measure of the third line into the seventh measure we have that a7 shape ah 
And then you notice the seventh and eighth measure here on the third line are exactly the same as the seventh and eighth measure on the first line. So this shouldn't be a problem for you. If you've already mastered those two up on the first line, this should just flow nice and easily. Into the fourth line. Oh, it's exactly like the second line so far. Still the same. Still the same. Okay, now it gets different just a little bit. So the last three measures are different. Up to there, the fourth line is identical to the second line. It's the last three measures though. So we start out with that open G. Then we've got the low E. The E7 fingering that we've been using. Oh, but then it's a little different, right? So we start with that G and C, G sharp and C bar. Then we need to take the C off because we need that open B. So we just have D, G sharp, B. So that sixth measure. And then into the A7 shape. And this measure is exactly the same as the seventh measure of the second line. Into the C shape. And then a G chord. There we go. All right, so that's that kind of broken down. There's a lot of just little movements in this one. So I think the key is kind of like what I was talking about. Identify the shapes that are happening and then just isolate those shapes. Whenever you have a situation where you have shape, 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 shape that your hand is moving and changing, just kind of isolate those shapes and move slowly and make sure that you have each one down and then just slowly glue them together then turn the metronome back on, do it in time, and eventually you will have that, uh, you will have that with no problem. All right, there is a little note right down on the bottom. This would be like the only kind of new concept, although we have seen this in the book already. Uh, whenever you see that uh, little squiggly line next to a chord stack like that, it just means to strum slowly. And it's called, the term is called, it says down on the bottom, quasi arpi quasi or quasi arpi. I don't quite know exactly. But essentially what that means is harp-like. See, if you can imagine just like a harp, just like slowly strumming the strings, that's what we're kind of going after. So instead of like hitting them all at once, just kind of a dramatic last note there. So that is Carry Me Back to Old Virginia. Now it is labeled on Dante, 72 definitely kind of fits in that realm. It could go a little faster. Uh, for today's lesson, we're just going to leave it right there at 72. So feel free to dive in here, walk through. If you have any questions or concerns, please comment below and I'll do my best to help you out with that. Thank you so much for tuning in today. As always, please subscribe. Check out my website at www.nicktolmanmusic.com. If you enjoyed today's content and would like to see more and help support Nick Tolman Music in continuing to make this content, please check out my Patreon page and we will see you next time. Thanks.